essentially, um, we have kind of a, a repeat of some of the same information that I shared two weeks ago. Um, and the, the big news is the celebration because last week we welcomed back nearly 15,000 learners in grades K through 12 in our STEP program. And then today we welcome back our littlest learners, our three and four years old, three and four year olds at the James Mitchum Early Childhood Center. And our kids have done a wonderful job of transitioning. Our staff has done a wonderful job of having our students back on site. And our leaders have done a wonderful job of ensuring that all of the pieces come together. We have many typical start of the year bumps, getting routines and things organized. Some things took a lot more effort and were quite much more exhausting because there's a whole lot much more to consider in the world of COVID now from routines and dismissal and some of the safety precautions to seating charts on buses. There's a lot of factors that we can't control in the world and COVID's only one of them. The other ones are traffic and construction and staffing shortages in the labor market and all of those things. Yet our staff did an amazing job of getting the school year started on a positive note. And our students were excited, energetic, and happy to be here with their friends um, and with, their, with all the adults that care about them so much. So we are, we are thrilled to have them back on site. We are off to an amazing start and I'm very, very optimistic about keeping up the momentum. Once again, I'll reiterate, we don't wish these protocols had to be in place. It would be far more easy, um, much more convenient to not to have to wear a mask and think about all of these other logistical considerations, but our kids are adaptable, they are flexible, and they are working through it and they're making the absolute best of it. And I can tell you that in every single building throughout this district, they've done an amazing job. And so I just wanna give great um, appreciation to our staff, our students, and our families, because our kids came ready and they knew what to expect and they really have done an amazing job of transitioning. I, I really truly could not be more proud of our staff, our students, and our families for working together and getting us off to such a great start. So we welcomed our, um, our kids back and we could not do this without the partnership, with our staff, community, families, family partners, and we are going to do amazing things this year. As is the case, amidst doing all of the, the great things that we're here to do with learning and growth and support, we have to continue to keep an eye on what's going around, uh, on around us in the community with um, the health metrics, what's going on with the um, COVID rates in the community. So we do continue to monitor those. We are seeing rises in the community transmission rates and the test positivity rates in the region. We've seen some um, rising in our local zip code area and we're kind of hovering around that 5% positivity rate. We are watching new cases. We're watching new cases per 100,000 and we're watching youth cases. Um, we're watching what's happening internally too with the uptick in the community transmission rates. We have an uptick of um, staff and student reported cases as well. So it is really critical, um, and as many of our, our students emphasized earlier this evening, that for one positive case, that these precautions are helping keep other children in school, and so they, they are a support right now. And our ultimate goal, and, I, and one of our parents said it earlier as well, five full days a week, every day, for every kid, and that's my goal. Um, so the masks do help because when we have positive cases, we may identify close contacts, but it's far fewer than if um, masks were optional. And um, we do, um, you know, have to keep in mind that, you know, there's exposure out in the community, there's exposure at home, and that does have an impact on those who are in school. So we are monitoring our cases um, very closely. We um, have our SHIELD program in place in our higher risk areas of extracurriculars, and we will continue to monitor this as well as on an ongoing basis. In the, in the tone of screening and testing tools, um, this is essentially in place for a couple different reasons. Um, we have these tools in our toolkit so that we can identify case, positive cases, so that's through a screening with SHIELD, and we're doing that in the high risk extracurricular activity um, extracurricular areas at the high school, and we will be expanding to um, some degree on a, uh, to the middle school as well. 
At this point, we do not have set plans to expand the SHIELD program, but we are watching very carefully if um, we need to increase this um, screening coverage in additional program areas or grade levels. By next now, we are using for point of care, essentially for symptomatic individuals, if there's been known exposure. And there could be a possibility um, with the guidance from the Illinois Department of Public Health that we could use um, this test, it's an antigen test, antigen screener, in the case of an outbreak um, where we have cases that are linked um, in a school setting. Again, with the goal to keep kids in school and to be as proactive as possible in identifying um, if there's a positive case so that we can isolate contact trace and work with our local health department. In the upcoming week, parents will be receiving um, an informational email that is essentially just this information about the testing tools that are in place in Valley View um, and that we will have essentially when these tools become available to their child or if they become available to their child based on their participation in a program or the fact that they're in a particular grade level, that parents would be notified um, before that occurred. Just as if a, a child comes down ill at school with a fever and a cough, the nurse would contact the parent um, before administering that test. Um, and then again, that just gives us early information to begin the contact tracing process. So at this point, we are um, preparing to be ready to expand testing programs in the event that we need to. Um, and that is certainly um, tools that we will continue to utilize um, however we need to in order to keep our doors open, keep our kids in school, and to minimize any disruptions in their learning. Thank you um, to our families for continuing to monitor daily your child's symptoms at home. We're gonna continue to remind you of this. This is truly critical in partnership with your school nurse, your school administration is, is so important um, because this early identification um, is helping support keeping everyone else healthy. Um, in addition to having our kids back in school, um, you know, lunch from a logistical perspective is quite challenging um, to ensure that we do our best to distance and have our kids eat as safely as possible. The positive benefit here that really helps on some of that logistical strain is having um, free meals, breakfast and lunch program um, through the federal program for all students. So we um, no families are aware of this by now, but I also would like to ask families to register for um, the free meals, the free and reduced lunch meal, and the application link is there um, if, if you qualify. There is really important, there's some other benefits here for the district, but important, most importantly is there's benefits for the family too for reduction in um, fees, fee waivers. You can get reduction in some test fees, some college applications offer waivers um, and other benefits too. So although we have free meals, um, there is a benefit from filling out that meal application. So we will continue to communicate that to the community as well. Um, some of the bumps that we um, experienced in the first few days of school um, were with routines, dismissals, procedures, as we're getting those to the fine tune level that we are used to um, having those at. Um, transportation and busing is also um, areas that we're working on. And we did have some areas where um, ab absolutely we were, you know, behind schedule or adapting and making adjustments to ensure that we could get um, our kids home safely. Um, but we've had improvement day over day um, and we're happy to report that continues to be um, a positive, positive area that we will continue to improve. Um, just some other important reminders, more traffic, more kids out, um, please exercise caution around our school buildings. Every building is doing their best to um, work on that car arrival and dismissal. We have a lot more families driving than normal, so please be patient and please work with the school staff because they're working very hard to ensure that is safe for everyone involved. Um, and so in closing, and definitely a, a much briefer update today, um, our goal will remain keeping our students safe and physically present in school. Our goal will remain a caring and responsive environment for everyone in our learning community, physical safety, emotional safety, and well-being. We are continuing to do everything we possibly can to support that. We're gonna continue to be proactive. We're gonna monitor conditions, and then we are going to respond with increased or decreased strategies when appropriate. Um, we're continuing to collaborate with um, the local health professionals, the health department, 
and all of our other resources and support so that we can continue to stay on top of this and ensure that that great start that we have begun continues and we continue to sustain that momentum. And most importantly, our kids are here with us in Valley View in their school buildings where they belong. So our kiddos at the Early Childhood Center started today. We know open house and curriculum nights are, are coming up and um, the, our first one is this week and then every other building has their own date scheduled. Um, please work with your school um, in terms of the, the directions for that. We will have to make some modifications just to ensure we can do it safely. Um, and all safety precautions, including masking, of course, will be in place. Um, a couple other important reminders about exclusion, physicals for immunization, that date is September 1st. And then a much needed three day weekend with no school on September 6th. So we'll continue to communicate via all um, modes, social media, website, school level and teacher communication of, is of course your most relevant um, access point for communication. And then I'll have communications coming up to the board. Um, again, I will just emphasize the, um, the level of partnership that it's gonna take to continue to sustain this positive trajectory that we have established. Again, I will reemphasize, I understand that everyone has strong opinions and everyone has feelings, emotions, and I hear from parents all across the spectrum. I hear from students all across the range that um, of the differing kind of opinions, experiences, and everything that they're bringing to the table. But ultimately, no matter where we lie on that continuum, it is critical that we find a way to make it work and we work together to make the best of our circumstances. And so that's all I have for you this evening and I'm happy to entertain any questions from the board.